All right, so with the new upload files step that we just added, I'm gonna go ahead and build an automation using the new guided builder to upload something to WeTransfer.com. So I have these logos in my downloads directory and I just wanna upload them to WeTransfer and scrape the link for whatever reason. So in the guided builder, I'm gonna type in WeTransfer.com, save step and go to URL. And then the next step is going to be recording a click. And this is the click that's going to be converted to an upload file step afterwards. So I went ahead, clicked record click, clicked this, even though it's not traced, it's a really, really, really thin line that's around that is what I'm assuming. I'll click confirm. And then what we're going to want to do is convert this step to upload files, like I was saying. So we just click these three dots and then convert to upload file and it's just expecting a file path to be entered. And we can do that afterwards when we have things uh, a little bit more space to work with and I can show you guys some of the article that the article that goes along with that. So the next step is going to be actually doing this in the browser. Let's just upload a file so we can move forward. Um, I did not mean to click folder. So I'm going to upload both of these SVGs. Now it's not tracking those file paths. We need to enter those manually afterwards. And that gives us the chance to, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Good thing we're doing the manual version. What I can do now is click record, click, get a link and download that link. So like I was saying, it wasn't, these file paths aren't being tracked here. We're going to need to enter these on our side. I'm going to do this after we record, but you can do this during the builder uh, during the builder portion as well. I just like using that space a little bit more. So I just recorded a step clicking get a link and go ahead, click that again. Now that I have it recorded, I'm going to go ahead and add a delay because I have a little bit of time for this upload to actually process. And then the last step is going to be a scrape step that is getting this URL. So I just click scrape, scrape text, and then I'm getting that, and that is going to be all that we need. So now that we're going to have a little bit more space, I'm going to add the file path that we're using, which is in this article, but I am going to go ahead and do the steps for Mac now. What you can do is go ahead, click Finder, which I have open already here, navigate to wherever that file is, and then you're going to right click and click Get Info. And then in this where section, we're going to right click again, click copy as path name and paste that. And then the only thing that this is missing is the actual path name itself. So we're going to add logo.svg and that is that for single files. If we want to add multiple files to be uploaded at the same time, let's say Dropbox, Google Drive, things like that, then we're going to add a semicolon and we can paste the next path. So it'll be something like this. If I want to upload, oops, there we go. If I want to upload both of these files. So I'll go ahead and split that again. Maybe won't add a semicolon to the end there and save this. And that is all we need to do. The cool part about this is it allows you to specify something from Google Sheets, whether it's going to be the folder or the file name. Both can be replaced with something from a Google Sheet or a webhook or a previous scrape step. So if I click play steps, this is going to go to weed transfer. We're not going to see the actual upload screen pop up, but we're going to see that the files were uploaded. It just didn't require that pop up to happen. So once this loads, we'll see that the files will pop up here. So both my logo and my copy, and then we're going to click get a link. And then we have a really short delay, which hopefully was long enough. And then we are going to go ahead and scrape that link.